One of the absolute worst things about the Olympics and the fact that swimming is an Olympic sport is that we get this massive amount of excitement. Let's go! Let's go! Once every four years, and then afterwards, we're just kind of left dangling. We're just kind of left out in the wilderness trying to fend for ourselves and trying to find excitement on Instagram reels or maybe on YouTube where you're at right now because we don't get live swimming really anymore. We don't get it produced to the level that we get it produced at at the Olympics anymore. And for a long time, a really long time, including the first 30 seconds of this video, I've complained about the fact that I hate that swimming is an every four years sport. Every four years. It's this kind of like badge of honor that we've worn for like a long time because it's so difficult and it's so draining and it's such a bummer. And, you know, I, I just, I've complained about it for a long time. We all have, okay? We all have, we've all done it. We all do it. But I decided this year, I'm gonna at least try because you guys have given me a platform for some reason to be able to speak on swimming and people listen. I decided this year, I wasn't gonna complain about it. Well, I probably, I'll still complain about it. What I am doing this year, my goal this year is to take the platform that y'all have given me and try to be a resource for collegiate swim teams to make a dual meet exciting and potentially break an attendance record. A dual meet attendance record, not a facility record because club meets have a bajillion people there just because of entries, the sheer number of entries and parents that exist in that atmosphere. We, we don't need to try to compete with that. We are talking about two programs swimming head to head with fans and parents in the stands. That's it. So the attendance records for those stadiums, venues, natatoriums, whatever you want to call them, probably could have just gone with natatorium. The goal is eight dual meets, eight attendance records. Now, some of those meets are going to have their attendance record at 250. Some of them are going to have it at 500, 1,000, maybe even like 2,000. You know, who knows what the goal is at the end of it? Maybe I'll tell you at the end of the video as a sport that really likes to complain about not getting share of voice or consistent share of voice and someone that has taken part in that, I just figured, you know what, why not try to get on a pool deck more? One of the most exciting and fun times of my life so far, and in this career that I have chosen to be in so far, was getting to go out to Indy, Indianapolis for Olympic trials. I was my first Olympic trials I ever got to go to. I got to meet a ton of y'all. It was probably the most fun I have had in the sport in a nine-day period, or really, I think, just the most fun that I've had in the sport, period. I got to meet a ton, a ton of people. I got to watch fast swimming. I got to interact with some of the athletes and you know, get to do all of that stuff. But the bummer is, is now we have to wait four years to do it again. So I started thinking and started talking to some people that are very talented in industries that I am not that talented in, one of those being graphic design. I am colorblind, by the way. So if my videos are ever incredibly poorly color graded or not color graded at all. Maybe, maybe that one. Cause I just, I just don't even touch it. I don't want to deal with the colors and stuff. Cause then all of a sudden like I'm orange or something, or I'm, I'm like really washed out. And so I started reaching out to people and trying to fill the gaps that I just quite frankly, am not, not good at. So I've put together a small team and we are going to go to eight of these dual meets throughout the country, try to break attendance records and try to just bring some fun. Because one of the things that I think is missing from dual meets, which I really think is swimming's game. Head-to-head, -head, really easy to comprehend for a swimming fan, for a casual fan to be able to come in and look at the score and say one team is winning, one team is losing. And then, you know, eventually I think if we can generate enough buzz and consistently put enough butts in seats at these dual meets, there could be something that happens down the line that makes these dual meets actually matter during the season. Because I think one of the reasons that a lot of people don't come to dual meets is because there's really no reason to. We know exactly what we're going to get because we were a part of it and we don't really want to watch it. We don't. It's just kind of an elevated practice. So giving fans a reason to come watch a dual meet is really the whole theory behind this. And whatever comes of that, if it is elevated interest from an athletic department, elevated interest from potential streaming partners. There's a little bit of a hint there. Maybe there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that people don't know about. Whatever comes of this, hopefully it is a positive when we can do this again next season. Okay, so we're going to eight meets. The first meet I've already announced is UNCW. I love Bobby Cantura and what he's done with that program, the way that he's been really leaning into the excitement and the, the media and you know just leaning into what could be 
in swimming. And that's something that I think we should be doing more of. In my last video I released, I was like, we got to try something. You know, we got to just try to do something. And if it fails, it fails. I think we learn from that as well. Believe it or not, we do it a lot in the pool. We do it a lot in meets. We try something, it doesn't work. We go back to the drawing board. But I think we need to start doing it around the meets and engaging those fans. So we're going out to UNCW versus Duke. That one's going to be an absolute blast. I think we're going to pack that facility like it's never been packed before. I think we might even elevate capacity, try to talk to fire marshals and figure out if we can actually put more people in there and do so safely. And then we're actually setting up an overflow area for people that show up and can't get inside. One of the cool things about this is as we've, you know, launched these announcements and put it out there and, you know, sent emails out to alumni and stuff like that. Our worry has gone from how can we put enough people in these venues to, you know, make it look full to what do we do if too many people show up? And that's a really cool problem to have in swimming because typically it's like, how can we get people other than parents to show up? And now it's like, what do we do if 3,000, that's just a random number, 3,000 people show up and we only have 500 capacity? Now, it'd be a really cool thing for the sport if you're in that 2,500 and you're like, wow, 2,500 people showed up and they couldn't even get into this. That's pretty cool. But also from the perspective of someone that's trying to help put on events and, and try to figure out the event marketing side of this sport, be a really bad fan experience. So we're already thinking about overflow areas and what we can do to engage with, you know, club teams are canceling practices. What can we do to engage with club swimmers to keep them engaged in the sport so that in four years when we're in LA and this college system is thriving, we've got enough athletes to field the team. Because it's not really a secret that swimming doesn't generate a ton of revenue and it's a really hard sport. Really, really difficult sport, both mentally and physically. If you want to do it for a long enough period of time that you can make an Olympic team. Some people are able to start the sport at 19 and make an Olympic team by 24. Some people are good enough to start at 12, make an Olympic team by 19 or 20. But some people start at four and they grind their way all the way through the sport and they never make it. And I think one of the biggest things that's missing from the sport is when you graduate, getting to just stay engaged and getting to stay engaged in a positive way. You know, we don't want people to have to go to dual meets if they're not fun. You know, if you're a college coach and you are bummed that people aren't coming to your dual meets, but you're also not doing things to try to convince them to show up, I really don't think any of your complaints are going to fall on ears. They're going to be receptive to any of those complaints. Now, if you are emptying the playbook, you're doing innovative formats, you have a DJ, you have a hype man, you're, you're a smoke machine, you're trying stuff and you're putting it out on social and you're doing posters and all that and people still aren't showing up, then we go back to the drawing board. But one of the things that I think we really haven't done in this sport is try enough stuff and then see what the results are. So we're going to try it at least eight times. The ultimate success is we break eight dual meet attendance records and then it seeps into the rest of the NCAA and we accidentally break 40 as a result of what these teams are doing. Hopefully I can be a small part of that, but then also the fact that it just seeps out into the rest of the sport and we can start to make you know some noise. We're not volleyball. We're not women's basketball. We can't just throw a hard court in a giant football stadium and try to set a record and beat you know USA Swimming's 22,000, I think it was. Um, at Olympic trials because we'd have to build a Mirtha pool and it would cost millions of dollars. But what we can do is we can try our best and we can try to pack venues and break attendance records and then try and tie them after that. So full schedule is going to be coming out on my Instagram dual meet tour every four years. Let's make it every year because I don't know why the hell not.